As my mother would say about Barack, God love him, he's a good man. Folks, it's good to be back with friends. Mayor Neely, Governor Whitmer, Lieutenant Governor Gilchrist, Debbie Stabenow, my good buddy, Gary Peters, who you are going to send back to the United States Senate, because I'm going to need him. We can always count on him to be your senator for you and your family. And my good friend, Congressman Dan Kildee, who we need to send back to the House. Dan's a good man, a good man. And of course, I wish we could figure out how to send back a guy who uh, we used to have an expression in the, up in Scranton. We'd say when someone wasn't somebody else's equal, we'd say it wasn't a patch on his jeans. I tell you what, Mr. President, you're still driving him crazy because he knows he wasn't a patch on your jeans. I tell you what, Barack Obama, it's great to be with the president again. It reminds me of what we can be when you have a president of character, a president respected around the world, a president our kids looked up to and did look up to. I want to say something we don't say often enough, and I mean this from the bottom of my heart. Barack Obama was a great president of the United States of America. And I want to make sure we say it here today. Mr. President, thank you, thank you, thank you. Went through eight years without one single trace of scandal. Not one single trace of scandal. It's going to be nice to return to that. Flint, three days, three days. We can put an end to this presidency we have now that has divided the nation. Three days, we can put an end to a presidency that has failed to protect this nation. Three days, we can put an end to this presidency that has fanned the flames of hate all across this nation and made us a laughing stock around the world. Millions of Americans have already voted. Millions more are voting today, tomorrow, and God willing, all the way through to the close of the polls on Tuesday. And my message to you is simple. The power to change the country is not figuratively, it's literally in your hands. I don't care how hard Donald Trump tries, there's nothing, let me say it again, there's nothing that he can do to stop the people of this nation from voting in overwhelming numbers and taking back this democracy. And when Americans vote, no matter how many threats he makes, America will be heard. When America's heard, I believe the message is going to be loud and it's going to be clear. It's time for Donald Trump to pack his bags and go home. We're done with the chaos, the tweets, the anger, the hate, the failure, the refusal to take any responsibility. We've got a lot of work to do. We've got a lot of work to do. And if I'm elected your president, we're going to do it. We're going to act. And we're going to need your help in doing it as well. We're going to act to get COVID under control. On day one of my presidency, I'll put in action a plan I've been taking about, talking about for months, already laid out a national mandate. Mask wearing, social distancing, testing, tracing, all things. As President Obama just said, it should have and could have been put in place months and months ago. A plan for a full and fair and free, I might add, distribution of therapeutics and vaccines when we get one. Imagine where we'd be if we had a president who wore a mask instead of mocking it. I can tell you this, we wouldn't have 9 million confirmed cases of COVID in this nation over 230,000 deaths. We wouldn't be seeing a new record of cases. We're seeing right now 90,000 cases. Today, yesterday, 90,000 new cases. We wouldn't be facing, by the way, 500,000 in just the past week. And this guy tells us it's going away. Only thing's gonna make it go away if he goes away. <laughs> Folks. We wouldn't be facing another 200,000 deaths in the next few months. 
This president knew in January the virus was deadly and trying to improve his image. He went up and tried to talk to Bob Woodward. He thought he could change his mind. But what he did, he let it be known. All the way back in January, he knew how dangerous this pandemic was. And he hid it from the American people. He knew it was worse than the flu. But he lied to the American people. He knew it wasn't going to disappear, but he kept telling us, a miracle is coming. And yesterday, he had the gall to suggest that American doctors, people who are putting their lives on the line, on the front lines, to save other lives, along with nurses and so many others, he suggested falsely that they're inflating the number of COVID deaths to make more money. What in the hell is wrong with this man? Excuse my language, but think about it. It's perverted. He may believe it because he doesn't do anything for other than for money. The people of this nation have suffered and sacrificed for nine months. None more so than the doctors on the front lines and healthcare workers. And this president is questioning their character, their integrity, their commitment to their fellow Americans. It's more than offensive. It's a disgrace especially coming from a president who has waved the white flag of surrender to this virus. Our frontline health workers, they've given their all to beat the virus. We have a president who's just given up. I will never raise the white flag of surrender. We're going to beat this virus, and we're going to get it under control. And the first step to doing that is beating Donald Trump. Look, Donald Trump keeps telling us what a great job he's done as president. <laughs> oh, man. Well, did you know President Obama and I, as he pointed out, created more jobs in the last three years of our administration than he did in the first three years before the pandemic? How about this? Or did you know? Donald Trump's going to be the first president in 90 years who's going to finish his term with fewer jobs under his leadership than when he started. Look, that's a lot of presidents. That's a lot of crises. But only Donald Trump is going to have fewer jobs at the end of his presidency than when he started. You see, I and Barack understand something Donald Trump doesn't. Wall Street didn't build this country, you did. Working people built this country, and unions built the middle class. He's done nothing but wage war on American labor. I see the UAW sign out there. First outfit ever endorsed me in 19, when I was a 29-year-old kid. God love you. Look, we have a different view. We believe we should be rewarding work, not wealth, in this country. Under my plan, if you make less than $400,000 a year, you're not going to pay a penny in additional taxes. But the wealthiest people, the biggest corporations, 91 of the Fortune 500 companies paid zero in federal income tax last year. They're going to start to pay their fair share. The super wealthy are going to pay the same rate they paid at the beginning of George Bush's administration. And corporations are going to start to pay their fair share. Why should a firefighter, an educator, a nurse pay the higher tax rate than someone making literally a billion dollars? Or should you, why should you pay more in taxes than Donald Trump? He paid $750 in taxes, the one year we know of. He's yet to release it. I've released 22 years of my tax returns. You can go online and look. He hasn't released one. He talks about corruption. What is he hiding? He owes 41 million bucks out there. Who's he owe it to? Have you noticed? He's the only president I know of that has a secret bank account in China. 
paid 50 times more taxes in Beijing than he's paid in the United States. And this guy talks about corruption. Look, we're also going to act to protect health care. Trump and the Republicans just jammed through a Supreme Court nominee for one overwhelming reason. As Barack said, the president said, we have been, they've been trying over 50 shots to take out Obamacare, destroy the Affordable Care Act. But they're going to be in court, I believe it's seven days after the election. Win or lose, they're going to be in court. And if they get their way, 100 million Americans will lose protections for pre-existing conditions, including more than 4 million Michiganders. Donald Trump thinks health care is a privilege. Barack and I think it's a right for people to have bad health care. We're not only going to store Obamacare, we're going to build on it. We're going to keep your private insurance if you like it. And you can choose a Medicare-like public option if you don't. We're going to increase subsidies to lower your premiums and deductibles. Out-of-pocket spending, reduce prescription drug costs by 60 percent. Look, we're going to make sure you keep the protections for people with pre-existing conditions. Meanwhile, Donald Trump laid out what he's going to do in his second term if he's elected to Social Security. The actuary at the Social Security Administration says if he gets that plan passed, it will, quote, bankrupt Social Security by 2023, something millions of Americans live on, paid for their whole life. When I said back six years ago, as Debbie will tell you, when I said the Republicans are going to try to eliminate Medicare, everybody said, no, that's crazy. First thing Paul Ryan and the Republicans in the Congress did was try to cut billions of dollars out of Medicare. These guys mean what they say. I'm going to protect Social Security, Medicare and Medicaid, because it's a lifeline for so many hardworking folks. But folks, I have to admit to you, it's kind of personal with me. There's nothing worse that this president has done, in my view, than the way he speaks about are women and men in uniform and those who have given their lives. He called them losers and suckers. My son, Bo, was a major in the United States Army, gave up the Attorney General's job and petitioned to be able to go with his unit to Iraq for one solid year after, as a U.S. Attorney, being in Kosovo, I might add, I'm going to be a typical dad. He's the only foreigner in Kosovo that has a 12-foot memorial dedicated to him. The major highway they built, the Bo Biden Highway, because of his commitment. My son came home with a bronze star, the conspicuous serviceman, like so many others, before he passed away. But guess what? He wasn't a sucker. He wasn't a loser. Nor any of you served. You're patriots. And just like all of your sons and daughters, your parents and grandparents who served, the president likes to portray himself, I love this, likes to portray himself as a tough guy. When you were in high school, wouldn't you have liked to take the shot? Anyway, it's a different story, but anyway. A macho man. But when's the last time you read about, saw, heard about a president of the United States literally being laughed at by world leaders when he spoke of the United Nations. Laughed at, out loud. When's the last time you saw a President of the United States being openly mocked by the leaders of NATO at a NATO conference? And can you believe we have a president who acts like Vladimir Putin's puppy? Putin put bounties on the heads of American soldiers serving in Iraq, and Trump was too scared to challenge him. Talked to him six times, has never mentioned it. Trump's not strong, he's weak. He commands little respect over the international stage. 
This is the president who not only doesn't understand sacrifice, he doesn't understand courage, physical courage it takes to serve in uniform in a war zone. Maybe that's why six generals and admirals who worked for him left his administration and said he was unfit to command, be commander-in-chief. When's the last time any president has had that happen? Tough guy. That's why Joint Special Operations Commander, General Stanley McChrystal, that's why head of the Navy SEALs who oversaw the raid of bin Laden, Admiral Bill McRaven, and 22 other four stars have endorsed me, saying they support me to be their next commander-in-chief. Because like Obama and Bush and before him, they know we respect them, we we'll support them. I've been in and out of war zones as senator and vice president over 35 times. I tell you what, these folks we have, only 1% of the country is in the military. We owe them. They're the backbone, they're the sinew, they're the heart of who we are. That's why we have to support our military and get rid of Trump. <laughs> Folks, you know, I want to tell you something. Think about this. This is a guy who says there's no such thing as climate change. He calls it a hoax. I see it as jobs, health, and safety. The impacts on climate are too often fall disproportionately on poor communities and communities of color. We're going to make sure communities benefit from the hundreds of billions of federal investment in infrastructure and climate change we're going to do as a consequence of the change in the structure. We're going to create local jobs to rebuild roads, build sidewalk cracks, install broadband, create spaces to live, work, and play safely, to modernize infrastructure so you can turn on the faucet and clean water comes out. And when that happened in Flint, it will never happen again anywhere in America. We can and must do this. Donald Trump has rolled back more than 100 environmental protection laws, many enacted under Barack and me. It also holds polluter, I'll call polluters accountable with the most ambitious environmental justice agenda ever. Folks, we're an act to deliver on racial justice in America. Protesting is not burning or looting. Violence has, cannot be tolerated, and it won't. But these protesters are their cry for justice. The names of George Floyd, Breonna Taylor, Jacob Blake will not soon be forgotten. They're going to inspire a new wave of justice in America. America has had their eyes opened up. They're ready. Look, I believe this country has to come together. I know when I announced well over a year ago when I said I wanted to unite the country, everybody said that's naive. That was a long time ago. You did it before, Biden, but you can't do it again. Well, we can and we must. We have no choice. That's how democracies work. I'm running as a proud Democrat. But I will govern as an American president. I'll work as hard for those who don't support me as those who do. That's the job of a president. It's a duty to care, a duty to care for everyone. So please vote. You still have an absentee ballot? Get it to a drop box as soon as you can. You can also safely vote early until Monday afternoon, or you can vote on Election Day. Just make a plan. Help get out the vote. As you've heard this 10 times already, visit IWillVote.com slash MI. Folks, we have such an incredible opportunity. Well, God love you. Thank you very much. But here's the deal, guys. We got to vote up and down the ticket here. I, honest to God, believe, I give you my word as a Biden, I, honest to God, believe we're in the cusp, we're in an inflection point. We have a chance to make such enormous progress. 
because the American people have seen what the other looks like. They've gotten a glimpse of the abyss. I really mean it. They're ready. They're ready to change so much. I'll never forget what President Kennedy said when he promised to send us to the moon. He used a phrase that has guided me. He said, we're doing it because, quote, we refuse to postpone. Well, I refuse to postpone the incredible opportunities to the United States of America for the American people. There is nothing beyond our capacity. There is no limit to America's future. The only thing that can tear America apart is America itself. And that's exactly what Donald Trump has been doing from the beginning of this campaign, dividing America, pitting Americans against one another based on race, gender, ethnicity, national origin. It's wrong. It's un-American. That's not who we are. Folks, everybody knows who Donald Trump is. Let's keep showing them who we are. We choose hope over fear. We choose unity over division. We choose science over fiction. And yes, we choose truth over lies. My fellow Americans, it's time for us to stand back and stand up and take back our democracy. We can do this. We're so much better than we've been. We can be what we are at our best, the United States of America. God bless you all, and may God protect us.